Hey guys and gals, next thing we're going to look at today is actually a mobilization at the foot. And I wanted to go through this because our particular individual here uh, is very limited with dorsiflexion uh, on the right foot especially. But uh, yesterday, I was kind of fooling around, noticed uh, on this left side, which is where we were working, that he was limited at the talonavicular joint with dorsiflexion. And when you look at the talocrural joint, he was fine. He's actually okay. And he's got okay length out of his calves, his Achilles tendon. But at this particular spot, it was very limited. And when we mobilized it, he went running afterward. He said it felt much better. But we saved the right side for all of you guys to look at and to learn how we do this if you're not used to doing it. So I'll show you what we looked at on the left side, and then we'll show you the difference between each side. And then we'll mobilize the right side and let you see the difference after. Okay. So if you look down here, here are his malleoli, and here's his talus, all right? You know, it's traditional palpation. And if I just kind of block his talus and dorsiflex the rest of his foot, he's got about that much movement on this left side. And I'd consider that close to neutral. It was certainly less than that yesterday. So yesterday we mobilized it. It was less, probably more here, and then we gained range to about neutral there for this particular area. I'm going to show you on this other side. Try not to get in your guys' way too much. But if I block again, I block the talus, and then Dorsey flexes his foot, that's all he's got. So I hope you guys can see the difference with that, but that is very restricted compared to the other side. And there's certainly abradduction at the talonavicular joint, but with dorsiflexion, that's all he has. So I may have to get creative with the angles of the camera here to, to get this, because I don't want to get in your guys' way. But I'm going to block, I'm going to use uh, this part of my index finger on my left hand, and I'm going to block the talus that way. So I'm going to hold it there. My forearm's going to line up with my direction of force for that. And if you need to, you can come around even further. I don't know what looks best, but I'm going to use my forearm to block the rest of it. And then my right hand, my hypothenar eminence, is going to actually come around and come up under that navicula. So here's his, the tubercle on the navicula. Line up my left hand, get my pressure so I have my hand wrapped around this whole plantar surface of his foot, but I'm not pushing up through here. I'm concentrating my force on my hypothenar eminence right where that navicula is, like that. And then here, you can see my forearms line up with my line of force, so I don't have to work quite as hard. But here, I'm giving pressure with my right hand in that direction. And for the mobilization, I could just sit here and, and hold. I could have him gently resist, so don't let me push you up. And as he does, he relaxes. As he lets go, I can take up some slack. And then we repeat. Gently resist. And let it go. Again. And let it go. So you often get the question, well, how, how many times do you do this? Or how, how long do you do this for? And the answer is simply until there's no more movement that's being taken up. So we take up more range. Resist again. Each time he relaxes, I'm feeling and I'm checking the amount of give that we attain. And let it go. And it, at this point, we're not really getting much more gains on it. I'll do it one more time just to make sure. Resist again. And rest. And that was about it. So now we come back just to double check to see if we made any gains. Stabilize again. And bring him up. And hopefully you guys can see that that's a much different result. Does that feel any different to you? A lot different. Okay. So here, we gain close to that neutral point. And for me, clinically, from what I've seen, uh, you get to you get the foot and ankle about to neutral, and that's 
the amount of range that's taken up at the tail and navicular joint for dorsiflexion. So if you can't get to neutral, then that's certainly a limited uh, range, like it was earlier. We barely got beyond here. But now we can get much closer to that neutral position. Okay. So of course we would follow this up with some neuromuscular re-education, having him hold it here. Keep it up in the dorsiflexion. Good. He would hold it there. We can go through resistance back and forth, having him resist through the entire range. And then uh, we would work other home programs with that. But that's just the mobilization itself. Oftentimes, patients will gain range of motion at the Achilles, at the calf, uh, all the muscles, the stretching, things like that, or at the Taylor cruel joint. But something may not feel quite right yet. Go back and check this, and I'd be willing to bet that you'll find some uh, joint restrictions at that point. So try it out. Let me know what you think. Comment. Give us uh, your, your questions or, or uh, other things that you can suggest to us. And we'll just keep putting out things like this. Thank you very much.